Welcome back YouTubers to my channel of an everyday life of Ashby. If you're new to my channel, I welcome you all. I'm Ashby. I'm all about creating mental health and awareness and sharing my life stories with Asperger's Syndrome and the like, along with tips and advice along the way to help you through your general health, mental health or anything in between. Hoping to be your advocate and support person all in one for when your time is, you know, a lonesome and hopefully in regards to some of the topics I bring will shed some light and encouragement for you all. So some of these right now are just the ones that I've been thinking I'm doing before doing these vlogmas I'm thinking about for Christmas or what have you. So this one's all about autism and sensory differences, which will be broken down to two parts, obviously. So the first part will be under sensitive and the second part will be over sensitive along with tips and advice along the way to hopefully maybe help people that are, you know, over or under sensitive in these parts of the sensory bits and pieces so that we can question so hopefully you'll like these smash the like button comment below also before i begin this if you've got any other suggestions that is based on these two parts so that we can learn from each other so let's begin this before we run out of time you know as we know many people on the autism spectrum to sort sort of thing or just anyone in general may have difficulty processing everyday sensory information because of everything that is going on around them regardless of maybe busy traffic maybe hearsay or there's crowds behind them talking and amongst themselves the noisy noisy environment versus the sounds of kettle whistling if they were in a cafe and stuff and whatever the case may be any of the senses may be over or under sensitive of women both at different time periods. These sensory differences can affect the behaviour of children and can have a profound effect on a person's life. Here I hope to help you to understand autism as well as just basically the person themselves and how to help them. You can also find out synthesia, therapies and equipment. So let's begin this. Too much information. Sometimes an autistic person may behave in a way that wouldn't immediately link to the sensory sensitivities. You wouldn't think so. A person who struggles to deal with everyday sensory information can experience sensory overload or information overload. As I've said before, I've already talked about the sensory overload, which I'll link it in the description as well as putting it in the eye above for you to check it out so you can understand to where I'm going. Too much information, however, can cause stress, anxiety, and possibly physical pain. This can then result for the person to withdraw in themselves and have their challenging behaviors or meltdowns. If I get a sensory overload, then I just shut down. You get what's known as fragmentation. I know it's weird to some of you, but this is just how it works. It's like being tuned into 48 TV channels all at once. If someone is having a meltdown or not responding, don't forever judge them. There are things that you can do to help them. This can make a world of difference to someone with autism and for the carers involved that may need their assistance. So therefore, again, I suggest to look into what a meltdown and all that is with the information below of this. Often, just the tiniest small amount of changes to the environment can make a difference. Creating a sensory profile may help you to work out what changes are needed. Three points to remember though when considering this is one, be aware. Look at the environment to see if there is any creating difficulties. Can you change anything from what's going on around you? Two, be creative. Think of some positive sensory experiences. And three, be prepared. Tell the person about the possible sensory stimuli they may experience in the different environments. How sensory overload might feel for an autistic person. Maybe I can suggest to you to watch a short film which shows what it could feel like to experience a sensory overload, which hopefully I can find that video about this lady that I was watching who has this. You know, just remember this film might have flashing lights, bright colours and loud sound and noises in the going on about it. So let's dip, break down into these sensory sensitivities that I mentioned of our everyday senses. Be it our sight is the number one for under sensitive is objects appear quite dark or lose some of their features. Two, central vision is blurred but the perivision is still sharp. Three, a central object is magnified but things on the perif periphery are blurred. And for poor depth perception, problems with throwing and catching clumsiness. Ways you might be able to help them is the use of visual supports or coloured lenses, although there is only very limited 
research evidence for such lenses. For the sound when they're unsensitive, you may only hear sounds in one ear, the other ears having only partial hearing or none at all. May not acknowledge some particular sounds around you. Inability to cut sounds, notably background noise leading to difficulties concentrating. Do you hear noise in the head? It pounds and scratches like a train rumbling through your ears. You could help by shutting doors and windows to reduce any external sounds around them. Preparing the person before going to a noisy or crowded place. Providing earplugs or headsets and music to listen to. Creating a small screened workstation in the classroom or office. Positioning the person away from the doors and windows. For the smell while they're under sensitive. Some people may not have no sense of smell and fail to notice extreme odours. This can include their own body odor which is sad but true some people may lick things to get a better sense of what they are you could help them by for this tip creating a routine of around regular washing and new strong smelling products to distract people from inappropriate strong smelling stimuli like feces but bear in mind that also in saying this that sometimes might be hypersensitive to the smells of perfumes and deodorants and other things Taste for the undersensitive, likes very spicy foods, eats or mouths non-edible items such as stones, dirt, soil, grass, metal, feces. This is known as pika. Touch is basically undersensitive, holds other tightly, needs to be do so before there is a sensation of having applied any pressure, has a very high pain threshold and may be able to feel food in the mouth, may self-harm, enjoys heavy objects like your weight and blankets, for example, on top of them, smears feces as they enjoy the texture, chews on everything, including clothing and inaudible, inedible objects. Tip and advice here is you could buy forced smearing, offering alternatives to handle with similar textures, such as jelly or cornflour and water. For chewing, offering latex free tubes, stools, or hard sweets, chill in the fridge. Balance, vestibular, under sensitive, a need to rock, swing, or spin to get some sensory input in them. You could encourage activities for this by helping to develop the vestibular system. This could include using rocking horses, swings, roundabout seesaws, catching a ball or practicing walking smoothly upstairs or curbs. Body awareness, pro, proprioception. Our body awareness system tells us where our bodies are in space and how different parts are moving. Under sensitive, stands too close to others because they can't measure their proximity to other people and judge personal space. Finds it hard to navigate rooms and avoid obstructions. May bump into people. To help them, my advice to you is on this front is position furniture around the edge of room to make navigation easier for these one people that has this. Two, <coughs> using weighted blankets to provide deep pressure. Putting colour tape on the floor to indicate boundaries. Using the arm's length rule to judge personal space. This means standing at arm's length away from people. Synthesia is a real condition experienced by some people on the autism spectrum. An experience goes in through one sensory system and out through the other. So a person might hear sound but experience it as colour. In other words, they will hear the colour blue. There are pieces of equipment to use. We can't make any, well, I can't make any recommendations just to remind you. <coughs> I'm no physical, no doctor, but I'm just a normal everyday Joe Bloggs that experiences autism and I'm just trying to do my best to give you what is best suited for some people and some, it may sound, work for some, it might not work for others while I'm doing this. And also, if you do see any warning signs and symptoms, basically seek professional help for yourself or your loved one. So, as the effectiveness of the individual therapists and individuals or equipment, I can't make any recommendations because everybody's different.
but you could research autism or a site called Research Autism provides free information about autism therapies and treatments and interventions. Music therapists use instruments and sounds to develop people's sensory systems, usually the auditory hearing systems. Occupational therapists design programs and often make changes to the environment so that people with sensory difficulties can live as independently as possible. Speech and language therapists often use sensory stimuli to encourage and support the development of language and interaction. I'll list below also some books that might be of use for you guys in doing this as well as well as maybe also some other resources that will be uh, beneficial to you. So this is quickly, really sh short and brief, hopefully, of the first part of Autism and Sensory Differences, which is your under-sensitive part one. Smash the like button if you're liking it. Comment below. Feel free to share these videos around to family and friends. Feel free, if you haven't done so and you would like to join me on this ride as well, and being part of my YouTube fam by subscribing. While you're down there, don't forget to turn on the notification bell so that you can keep up to date and know when my newer content is up to date. Follow me on my social media sites below as well because I usually post on the daily either through my pages on my Facebook or Twitter. And all for the do, guys, thanks for support, thanks for watching, do what you love, love what you do. Until next time, SB signing out, and I'll see you again soon. Ciao.